Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, today we are back for a part two of the QSYS uh, Ubiquity Pro AV thing. And I'm going to be racking a new router with a twist. It's the same router we already have. Ubiquity sent me an RMA, so I'm not quite sure why the RMA makes sense, but they said according to the logs, the um, UDM is crashing for some unknown reason and they wanna send me an RMA. And if you are new here, or if you don't remember the part one of this video, essentially we're having a ton of issues with network dropping out. Um, in terms of Dante and QSYS. So Ubiquity has re recently released a pro AV feature, which apparently will um, kind of enhance the experience for professional AV applications with Dante and QSYS. Uh, and that is has been a lot better in my experience here, but it has also caused a crap ton of problems. So um, this site specifically is a church, which means it's super, super important to have everything up and running for Sundays. Um, and there's been a lot of times where, actually a couple times where it's dropped out on a Sunday. Um, and it, yeah, it's kind of frustrating because um, for a church service, the audio is kind of relied on a lot uh, for microphones and that kind of thing. So we've actually implemented a secondary Dante network as a backup, um, but that does not fix all of the QSYS devices that we have. I just have a, over on the shelf there, actually have six more QSYS devices. So we are expanding the QSYS network here. <laughs> and yeah, we need a reliable network. So I've been on Ubiquity support for a while now, and they have been troubleshooting with me since December. It is now March 17th, and we're getting somewhere at least. Uh, they did a advanced RMA, which means they sent me a new UDM Pro um, without me sending the old one back in first. Um, so that's where we are. So if you have not seen the first video I made in this series, um, you should check out part one because that's kind of a good introduction to what all is going on. Okay, so at this point, I do not have an update on the UDM Pro stuff, but what I do have an update on is the QSYS stuff. So... Um, currently I am, the network is functional, so everything is fine. We'll get there in a second. Um, but what I do want to show you is kind of a demo that I'm going to do where I'm going to play some audio tracks on Logic Pro, uh, and that's going to be sending out that audio feed through Dante, uh, to one of the cores. And then that core is going to basically distribute the audio to the rest of the building. Um, so let me show you kind of what we got going on. Okay. So you'll see, we got four pings going on right here. The bottom right is the secondary core. Um, the top right is the primary core. I guess, I mean, they're not primary and secondary. They're in different rooms. They do different things. But generally, that is the main core. That is the other core. Um, over here is the um, router for the um, QSYS network. And the bottom left is just another router kind of on a different VLAN. So um, let me show you here what we have going on. So if I play the audio tracks, um, you'll see our pings quickly spike up. So we had about 20 milliseconds of ping. Uh, now we're going up to about 200, 500, um, back down to 1983, 59, and that goes across all VLANs, as you can tell um, from the numbers spiking there. And we actually have dropouts to the core right there. Keep in mind these IP addresses that I'm pinging, they are not just um, IP addresses of the cores on their Dante network. These are actually on the other LAN entirely. Um, so these should have nothing to do with Dante or QSYS uh, because there's actually no QSYS traffic or Dante traffic that goes through any of these IPs I'm pinging right now. And you may be asking, why is this doing this? I, I could not even tell you. So um, we are not using pro AV mode on the Dante network on the primary core. Uh, and I'm pulling up the secondary core right now to check that, but I don't think we are either. No, we are not using pro AV mode on either of the two um, cores. So at this point, you're probably wondering what that means. Uh, what these different pings mean and absolutely nothing to me at least um at this point they i, I don't even know why they're happening um i would i would totally understand if it's causing some kind of cpu overload on the udm pro um but it's sitting about 73 percent memory usage which seems high by the way um and then the load average is 1.5 slash 2.36 slash 2.63 so it's not insane Okay, so I reconfigured a couple of things and you'll see the pings are now kind of stabilized. Uh, and we also have um, the audio that is playing as well. Um, and over here on the QSYS file, uh, you'll see that we do have audio meters showing up on the output device, which essentially means that the audio is getting through the system and getting processed enough to actually land on the output device. So a few things that I learned. First of all, uh, Ubiquity probably was right when they told me that I should probably upgrade the UDM Pro to something better. And the fact that the CPU usage is still very high, uh, we're hitting about 30, sorry, 42% CPU, sorry, I meant memory usage. And then memory usage is about 72% 
usage. The load average has now gone down to 1.94, 1.98, and 2.12. So it has kind of decreased a little bit, I believe, if I'm, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, that being said, uh, one thing I did turn off that kind of actually really helped the issue was turning off smart queues on the internet. Um, ISP number one, or I guess way in one, um, turning off smart queues miraculously kind of helped this out here. All right, so the most up-to-date information I have is that um, we were having some audio popping issues. Um, I will display those on the screen. Uh, you are going to hear some static sound, and that's fine. Uh, but you're, what you're going to look for when you listen is you'll hear some popping kind of occasionally in the background. Um, and that is the issue that I'm talking about. The static is something, or the buzzing is something that I actually knew about. That is just something else I was working on. But the popping is the issue. After listening to that clip, you'll hear the popping is slightly annoying. So um, with that being said, that is only for audio that is going from that, that room out to the core not audio coming from the core. So what this means, what this means is that in my mind, at least it seemed to be some kind of QoS issue coming from that area um, outwards. Um, but actually it was a little different. So funny enough, it was actually related to the fiber pairs that go down to that section of the building. So the building is kind of sectioned off into three um, areas. There's the main one, there's the like student area, then there's the kids area. So essentially the core that the kids area runs off of is coming from the student wing. So for it to get there, it's got to go all the way back to the main area, do go up to the core switch, go down to the student area, etc. And with that being said, uh, it actually turned out that the fiber pair coming from the kids area to the main area on the transmit side was having those issues. It's a six count fiber cable, so I swapped it to a different pair um, and the issues actually resolved themselves for that area of the building. Um, but the occasional clock dropouts are still happening um, from what I know. Um, it, it's a lot less often and when they do happen the network does fail over to the secondary network So it is a lot better um, But the other thing that I am also doing now that I have not been doing before is I actually um, went on the QSIS website And I actually found their QoS values for their for basically just marking the DSCP packets um, And that's actually working out really well So let me pull up my profile here and I can explain to you how I'm doing this so every trunk port will get a profile um, and then every access kind of port for the devices has a profile that I built. Um, so I'm using, um, I'm marking DSCP packets type zero to Q3, um, DSCP packets 34 parentheses AF41 is going to Q1 and DSCP 46 or EF is going to Q0. So essentially anything audio clocking wise is at Q0, which is the highest priority. Q1 gets anything that is the audio signal, so kind of Dante or QLAN audio from what I understand is gonna to go to Q number one. And Q number three is going to grab every other packet and send that out um, at the lowest priority. So it's going to first distribute the packets at the utmost priority of clocking and audio, then normal LAN traffic. So this, I believe this really should only have an effect if the network is congested or if there's a lot of um, bandwidth being used. These are 10 gigabit fiber links, so it really should not be an issue. But um, I will say these QoS settings have improved it. Um, and the, on the access layer, I'm doing the exact same thing um, with the port profile. I just have a separate port profile because I'm tagging it to a VLAN. Whereas on the trunk ports, I'm not tagging it to any VLAN. I'm tagging it to the default network, but just prioritizing the packets in general. Um, so that's a little different there. But I can tell you that we have had zero dropouts since I've been doing this QoS setting. Um, I'm going to, if I have more issues, I will post a part three. As of right now, as of now, this issue does seem to be resolved. I wanted to thank um, all the Ubiquity support people. Um, they weren't it's super helpful in this scenario since I found this solution, um, but they were really nice and helpful with the logs. They still to this day are asking for packet captures and stuff um, to further analyze the issue and try to fix it. So um, I really do appreciate that. But with that being said, that is all I have for this video. Uh, check out a video coming soon about the UDM stuff. It's really stupid and annoying. Um, I love the UDM Pro, it's a great router. It's just, it seems like it's just at its capacity at this site, unfortunately. So eventually I'll probably try to upgrade, but until then, just check out that video. You can try to see the updates that I have to share with there. Uh, occasionally it randomly crashes and that kind of thing. It's really frustrating. So um, that being said, that is all I have for this video. Uh, I'm in a pretty good mood right now because the issues do seem to be resolved, which is fantastic news. So thank you again for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.